Hi everybody, today we are going to demonstrate best practices utilizing some seam sealers. So if you have a look at the tip on this Fuser 800 DTM, it's a standard caulking tip that I've cut at a slight angle. Now I'm going to take the tube, holding it also at a slight angle, and run a relatively straight bead here. And this is one example of how to replicate an OEM type of seam sealer with this particular product. Next what I'm going to do is apply some seam sealer in that taped off area. But while we're waiting to finish this, let's make a note of something. As I'm applying the seam sealer, it is being applied over epoxy primer. Even though the product is DTM, direct to bare metal, it is best practice to always apply your seam sealer over a two component primer product. Uh, and that does not include etch primer as the etch primer can react with your seam sealer. And that is because of the acid in the etch primer. So now I'm going to go in here with this spreader and spread the seam sealer out. And so I can use the spreader to spread it relatively straight or smooth if that's the desired effect that I'm going for. And so I've got a plastic spreader, spread it out. Now in this particular case what I'm going to do next is take this other plastic spreader. And what I've done on that one is uh, taken a razor blade and cut some grooves or lines into it. And this is uh, to create a combed effect. And so this combed effect can be used to replicate the seam sealer from the factory as well. So this next one I'm going to do here is apply this seam sealer. So this is an older product, it's 3M Drip Track, it's been around a long time, also 1K product. It is not DTM, however we are applying over the epoxy. So here I've spread it out and I'm going to spread it thin with my gloved finger. One thing to make note of, never use water or any chemicals such as gun wash or wax and grease remover to lubricate your bead. Even if it's a one or two component product, that solvent or water can get into the product and cause a problem with the chemical reaction within that product. Uh, here I'm just taking the seam sealer and applying it straight from the tube in a bead. Again, different ways of trying to replicate OEM type seam sealer. So this old drip check is not used that much anymore today, but it is still a good product and it has its place. One thing to note, always follow the procedures for the product that you're using. Drip check works best when it's put on relatively thin. Here I'm applying drip check in a pinch weld area on this Dodge Ram. So Chrysler recommends that all of their vehicles receive seam sealer on every seam, even if the seams did not have seam sealer uh, from the factory. So in this case, if you were to have put on a cab corner, for example, Chrysler would want you to seal this edge after the priming uh, process before it's painted. And that's to help seal out any moisture, salt, or other contaminants from within. And with Chrysler, if you're not aware, you're not allowed to use weld through primer. So this is part of the process that uh, prevents corrosion protection in the event of a vehicle that does not use weld through primer. So here I am back with the Fuser 800 DTM and I have a caulking tip. So I'm cutting the caulking tip off with my razor blade and I'm cutting it with a relatively big or blunt end. In my other hand I have a pair of locking duckbill pliers. I'm going to take the locking pliers and bend an end here. Now I'm going to take it and do that a second time just a little further back right there. And that's going to create a bit of a flat oval tip on the end of my caulking tip. Now if I take this caulking tip and install it back on my tube, which I've already done here in the video, I can take that oval end, go to my panel, and create a few different shapes with it. So first off, I'm going to take the caulking gun and move the caulking gun at a relatively smooth and consistent pace. And that's going to create a somewhat flat and oval shape of a product that's going to have rounded edges. Now if I take this gun and start moving that tip a little bit, so moving that tip back and forth while constantly squeezing the trigger on the caulking gun, I can create this weave-like pattern in here that replicates a lot of OEM looking seam sealer. Many manufacturers use this particular process on their vehicles. One component seam sealers can be quality products as one component may actually not mean one component in the sense that they may moisture cure meaning that the product does actually cross-link when it's curing and is non-reversible. So we talk about convertible, non-convertible coatings, or we may use the terms thermoplastic or thermoset plastic, and some of these could be thermoset even though they're 1K. So here we're going to talk about best practices with cartridge guns. This first gun is a 1 to 1 ratio, the second one is a 2 to 1 ratio for use with fuser products. So the first fuser product here is a 2 to 1 ratio, one big hole, one small hole, and plungers that fit those. The second one's a 1 to 1 ratio, so both holes are the same size, as are both plungers. Use the appropriate tool with cartridge. 
Where I'm pointing, if you have a really good look, is at these arrows. The arrows on these plungers must always point towards each other, and this is unique to fuser products and fuser cartridge guns. I'm going to remove the old tip from this tube since it's been used already. I'm going to insert it into the gun. Again, right cartridge, right gun for the ratio. And then what I want to do is purge out some product at the end. Now, if you notice, I'm purging this upright. If I were to invert the product and purge it, some of the product would run out because this is a running product, being a flowable seam sealer. So that is a good idea to purge in this upright position. Now I'm going to install a new mixing tip and then put a collar on the mixing tip that will help keep it in place. And that's the same for most brands of adhesives. The next thing I want to do is squeeze some material out before I put it on the vehicle. So if you notice, what I'm going to do is squeeze it out and squeeze out a length, approximately the length of one tip. And that's why I have an old tip here as a demonstration. So squeeze it out. Now notice the color difference. When it started, it was nearly translucent and now it's uh, blue and somewhat opaque at the end. That's why we purge to make sure it comes out evenly well mixed. Now I'm applying the product to the panel in this taped off section. And again, this being a flowable seam sealer will flow out. So I'm going to apply a product uh, as thick as I need it to. However, I always recommend when you apply seam sealer, if it doesn't need to be thick, sometimes thinner is better provided you still have enough material on there. When we apply two component seam sealers, a lot of two component seam sealers will cure. And when they cure, they have that exothermic reaction that creates heat. And that can cause air bubbles in your seam sealer. So I spread that out with a gloved hand. And then you know, once that's done, I will remove the tape. In this next section, I'm applying the exact same seam sealer and I've taped it here so I can put it up a little bit thicker. So I've created these dams around the product. If you are using a flowable product like this flowable seam sealer, these products do not like to be applied on any surface other than a flat surface. So if I try to apply them vertically, gravity will pull them down while they're in a liquid state. And so applying dams on the edges can help keep the material where you need the material to be kept. So I'm applying this product in here quite liberally. So I'm again putting a lot of it in here. As it's going in, you can see it starting to flow out a little bit on its own. Uh, if you have a look really close, you're gonna also see it's gonna start creating air bubbles in here. And it's also not gonna be 100% smooth or flat, but you do see it flowing right there naturally on its own. But we can see those air bubbles, especially on that right side of the panel. So how do we get rid of those air bubbles? One of the best tools is this, the heat gun. As we apply the heat gun to the flowable seam sealer, two things happen. One, heating up the seam sealer can be viscosity, making it more liquidy. That allows it to flow out even more and become even flatter. Excellent for roof grip rails, especially roof grip rails that are exposed. Uh, and a good example of that is the Ford F-150 roofs. Uh, another good example or good thing to make note of here is as I heat it and the viscosity changes becomes lower, the air bubbles come to the surface. As those air bubbles come to the surface, the air bubbles can escape. You'll notice that with most brands of flowable seam sealer, you do get air bubbles inside of them. Now, a few minor air bubbles inside the seam sealer, seam sealer aren't harmful. It's more of a cosmetic issue if this uh, seam sealer allows air bubbles to appear on the top surface. So we're going to keep going back and forth with the heat gun, allowing those air bubbles to move around, uh, come to the surface, and escape. Some people try to poke them with the pin or may fill them after, but again, I highly suggest that you use this heat gun technique. It also helps to speed up the curing process. So let's go back for just a moment and have a look at the purging. In this particular product with the purging, you can see it came out unevenly. That's why we purge before we put the tip on. The next product, as you can see, is a controlled flow seam sealer. I'm applying it to this taped off section. And after I have enough material applied, I will spread it smooth with my gloved finger. Uh, I'm a huge fan of controlled flow seam sealer. I find that it's an excellent product to replicate many types of OEM seam sealer. It allows some of the versatility of a thick, heavy bodied seam sealer in that you can work it, brush it, apply it on vertical surfaces, but it does have some flowing uh, characteristics, much like the flowable seam sealer. So you can have brush marks and other items flow out. And a good point to note is as I'm taking the tape off, pull it at an angle uh, towards itself and watch for little hairs or strings. A key factor with this is timing. When is the right time to pull the tape off? Right away as I'm doing here, should it cure for a few minutes or let it fully cure? It's rare that you'd want the product to fully cure as it may bond itself to the tape. 
So what you need to do is practice and get used to your product. I find most products work really well after a couple minutes of setting up. Before we go further, let's maybe discuss products for a moment. When it comes to controlled flow seam sealers, I find this Fuser product to be the thickest controlled flow seam sealer that I've used. Many other manufacturers have excellent quality controlled flow seam sealers that have a little bit more of a flowable characteristic to them. Before I discuss topics on brand, what I'm going to do in this corner is take my spreader and flatten it out. Some vehicles, for example Toyota, use this technique on door skins to allow drainage in the bottom corners. Now when it comes to particular brands, one thing to make note of is OEM recommendations or OEM requirements. If you are required to use a certain product, use that particular product. Fuser, 3M, SEM, many manufacturers do make some very good quality products. If the manufacturer of the vehicle does not recommend anything in particular, just make sure that you are making a good choice to use an appropriate product for that vehicle. Here I applied some of the control flow seam sealer on the right, and on the left the yellow product was the Fuser 800 DTM. I'm using those in this section to show you a technique in just a moment. But again, when it comes to products, any brand can work if there are no recommendations from the manufacturer. Follow those technical data sheets for the particular product you're using and make sure that everything in that is followed correctly. And again, in all cases, it's best practice to apply these over a two component primer product. DTM products can be applied over a two component primer. So here I have a blow gun and in this uh, particular case, the blow gun is going to be used with very low pressure to apply some patterns to this seam sealer. You can use the blow gun in circular patterns back and forth, moving in and out, and create a whole bunch of different patterns with your seam sealer. It'll vary greatly depending on the shape of the head on your blow gun, the pattern that you use, as well as the viscosity of the particular seam sealer that you're using. So this may replicate some seam sealer that could be used in a floor or trunk area in a vehicle. Uh, in this particular case beside it, I'm going to apply more of this controlled flow seam sealer and then I'm going to put some brush marks in it. Typically, if we're going to be using a brush to put brush marks in, we're going to be using a heavy body product. So that uh, Fuser 800 DTM could be a good example or two component heavy bodied seam sealers are excellent for leaving brush marks in the vehicle. A unique characteristic of controlled flow seam sealer is that I can apply the controlled flow seam sealer relatively smooth and that's what I'm doing on this bottom edge here. So I'm squeezing this product in there. You'll see in a few moments I'll take my glove finger and smooth it out. Back in that middle section I'll go in and brush it. Now the key with brushing a controlled flow seam sealer is the fact that the controlled flow seam sealer will allow some of the brush marks to flow out. So if you only want minor brush marks this is a great product to use for that. Another trick with this is allowing the product to set up slightly before we put the brush marks in. So here again, glove finger, smooth it out. If I need to, go back and forth and make sure that it's relatively even in thickness the entire way. So here I put the brush in, brush the product out. Now I'm getting some brush marks in there, but if we watch it for a few minutes, you'll see that the majority of those brush marks will disappear over time and you'll have minor brush marks left. It won't be perfectly smooth, but you will get the minor brush marks. So if I were to let this sit now for say two minutes and then come back and brush it, the brush marks would remain uh, a little bit deeper uh, and more permanently in this particular product here. Now I can go back in with a clean brush and try another technique with this too. Rather than brushing, I can go in and dab. So the dabbing technique can leave a similar pattern to what I created with the blow gun. Um, but you can see it leaves little tips that flow over themselves in here. Thank you everyone for watching our seam sealing video. Hopefully you guys have learned some of the best practice used in our industry.